bring in all the to you. That's great. Got it. Okay. Uh, Mark, also, if you can onboard any other participants that uh, come into the waiting room, that would be great. Really appreciate it. Okay. All right. So, uh, afternoon, everybody. Uh, Robert Hoken here, uh, Greenbackers Investment Capital. And uh, this afternoon's uh, session, we'll keep it short and sharp, is uh, patent box reclaims and what you what you really need to know. Uh, we're delighted to have uh, Gov Grants, who are experts in this space and uh, uh, who are going to uh, give you their uh, view on the ins and outs uh, of how to uh, maximize the opportunity. And our understanding is that uh, for many uh, UK startups and scale ups, uh, uh, there, there's money on the table to be uh, to be gained and, and recouped out of uh, out of Her Majesty's government. Uh, before I hand over to uh, to Gov Grant and to Dominic and Ash, uh, just a quick uh, update and uh, in in some cases a a first pass for you at uh, at Greenbackers and what we're all about, and and then over to uh, uh, to Gov Grant uh, for their uh, their presentation. Uh, just so that you know, we're recording this session. If you could all keep your microphones, aside from the presenters, uh, on mute, uh, we'll have the opportunity to uh, ask questions, uh, in which case you come off of mute uh, uh, as, we, uh, as we get into the Q&A period uh, uh, at the, uh, uh, during the closing remarks. So um, some of you, I can see some of you in the room who are actually uh, uh, Greenbacker's clients, uh, uh, so welcome. Uh, for those of you who aren't yet, uh, we are uh, basically a, uh, a program to uh, connect companies to capital in the net zero climate clean tech uh, uh, blue economy, green economy space. And why are we all smiling on the, this photo uh, is because we're on a mission. Uh, we're catalyzing investment needed, uh, as I'm fond of saying, to build a sustainable society, uh, one deal at a time. Uh, we've internationalized the program, so we have a footprint in North America, uh, the UK, Western Europe, and uh, South Africa. And, uh, and, and really, these are our two uh, significant audiences. You know, those on the left, these are ventures that we're supporting. You can see companies that are uh, in our uh, Greenbackers uh, showcase, which will come to shortly. And on the right side, there wasn't enough room to put all of the funds that we are uh, working with. Currently about 150 funds on our showcase platform, uh, all hungry uh, and, and interested in uh, uh, good quality deal flow, which we have vetted through our, our program. Uh, this is what we've developed during the pandemic uh, as a showcase uh, platform, our, 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 basically our flagship, uh, uh, a deal room that uh, allows companies to put a, an investment profile that we have helped them tune uh, in front of uh, an active investors. Uh, our super pitch uh, you know, program, uh, which we run a uh, couple of times a year uh, is going to culminate in a, a mega super pitch, if you will, uh, at the COP, uh, COP 26 uh, this November uh, on the 9th, 9th of November, actually. Uh, we also have a, a roadshow program for doing fully uh, managed fundraisers, more of a, a, a handheld uh, a program, uh, but most of our emphasis is on the uh, on the deal platform. It's kind of like crowdfunding for a more professional funding audience. Uh, we qualify the funds as well as the companies. Uh, uh, all professional investors, uh, very few angels, individual angels, but angel syndicates, uh, family offices, VC money, private equity, and the like. Uh, Feedback is very positive uh, for many funds that are uh, awash uh, with pitch decks. Uh, this gives them 
access to curated uh, similar experience uh, presentation uh, deals with pitch deck, with video, with team information. Uh, the, uh, it's been very gratifying uh, the response that we've been getting from uh, from investors on the platform. And as I said, th this will culminate in uh, in a super pitch program. Some of you on the call uh, are actually participating uh, in this. Uh, uh, we've taken we had a a, a call for uh, had over 120 uh, companies apply for 26 spaces. Uh, that we are uh, going to be uh, uh, having a, a live and a live stream presentation on the 9th of, of November. You all get links to how to register for this event if you're already not participating uh, uh, in it. The last time we did something like this, we had 2,000 uh, in our audience. It was insane. Uh, and we're looking to replicate that experience uh, on, the, uh, on the 9th. So, Join us, it's going to be amazing. Uh, we couldn't do what we do without the support that we get from uh, our program uh, sponsors. Uh, uh, and, and one of the, uh, the most active that, uh, uh, that we've had the privilege of working with is GovGrant. Uh, uh, I'll let them introduce themselves, uh, but uh, uh, I hope you get uh, some strong benefit from the presentation that uh, that they're making uh, uh, today, and without further ado, uh, over to uh, Dominic and uh, uh, and Ash to uh, to present. I'll uh, I'll stop sharing now and uh, and and allow you to uh, to to share as you as you uh, as you like. No problem. I'll just share my screen. See that just fine. Okay, fantastic. Dom, do you want to to sort of take it take it from here? Yeah, sure. And um, you know, thanks very much for uh, jumping on the call today, uh, everybody. It's great to uh, get the time to uh, to talk to you and uh, uh, spread the word a bit about Patent Box and also about intellectual property um, for uh, really a, a more commercial end uh, than, than people often uh, actually use it for. So we're going to talk to you today a little bit about the intellectual property world through uh, our lens and through the, the lens of investors and also uh, portfolio companies that, that we've worked with uh, to give you a few case study examples of how other people have been successful. Um, but before we do that, uh, we'll talk a, a little bit, ask you to knock on to the, um, uh, the summary. Yep. We'll, we'll talk you through uh, some of the things that exist when it comes to intellectual property and especially focusing on patenting. Uh, because that's the way uh, that the government is currently looking to incentivize people. Uh, Patent Box, you may have heard of it, it's been around for quite a long time now, uh, but it's still massively underutilized. And um, now that the UK is, is kind of on its own little bit when it comes to, to Europe, it's even more important for the government to make sure these schemes work properly. So they go hand in hand with R&D tax, which a lot of people have heard of, but uh, actually optimizing both R&D and uh, the position when it comes to, to patenting and patent box is something that people don't always understand. So hopefully we'll give you a bit of a, a steer on that. So what I'll do is uh, I'll pass over to, uh, to Ash just to talk to you a little bit about uh, the intellectual property landscape, give you a bit of a summary introduction and then I'll pick up again in a moment. Sure, thanks, Dom. Um, yeah, so I'll cover a little bit about um, what IP is, just from a, a broad sense, um, the kind of IP rights available in the UK and, and globally, um, and what kind of, you know, creative uh, works apply for which IP rights and potentially just some benefits um, as to why you should potentially look at, um, get, uh, you know, uh, protecting your innovations um, through IP. Um, and so, you know, when I sort of think about IP, I think about sort of creations of the mind. Uh, examples of IP or creations could include uh, inventions, literary and artistic works, designs, um, brand names, logos, slogans even. Um, and, and really the intellectual property system is designed uh, by law um, to strike a balance between incentivizing um, people to innovate. And that's really by rewarding the creator for really creating um, their, their innovations, but also balancing that against um, fostering further innovation um, 
and allowing others to build on what's become before it, uh, uh, what's come before it. Uh, and there are two sides of the coin here, um, as you can imagine. So there's you know, one side, which are the, the inventors um, who would want as much protection um, and as, you know, uh, for, as, for as long as possible and for as much as possible. Um, but then there's also the other side, which is uh, everybody else who would want a slice of the inventor's cake. Um, and really, uh, IP rights tend to, to sort of you know, uh, reward creators um, for uh, you know, coming up with their invention, spending all their hard cash and R and D time um, in what they do, um, but also for a, for a small cost. Um, in the UK and globally, there are a number of intellectual property rights that are available to creators, um, which you can see on this slide. Um, they can be broken down really into two kind of categories. It's kind of an old-fashioned way to do it, but it works. Um, and so on the left hand side, uh, there are industrial property, which focuses more on sort of technical works. Um, so patents, which uh, really are focused on things that um, sort of show how things work. Um, trade, trademarks, as some people know, um, really cover brand names and design uh, and uh, logos. Uh, designs uh, cover pretty much what it says in the tin, um, how things look. Um, but then on the other side, you've got copyright, which is more focused towards cultural works and artistic works. Um, so as you can see on the slide, um, copyright protects literary works, artistic works, film, music, also includes broadcasts, sound recordings and software code even. Um, but all of these patent right, uh, sorry, IP rights have um, different timescales and also different requirements, um, but it's always worth sort of looking into um, you know, a bit further as to which ones may be applicable for you. Um, but what it does show is that because it's so varied and so broad, um, every company would have a form of IP right within their business, um, whether that's in, for, in the form of a brand name um, or a new product or a trade secret. Uh, it's essential that you look within your business um, to really see uh, the myriad of IP rights there, which ones may fit best for your business. Uh, and so why would you want to do this? Um, I will just quickly skip on to this. Um, three main reasons. Uh, protection, firstly, so um, it enables really the, the owner to stop others from uh, commercially exploiting their invention. Um, and again, have a monopoly over the technology. For patents, it's really up to 20 years, um, but for other IP rights, it does vary. Um, that protection then allows you to potentially commercialize your innovation and have you have it sort of clear path or clear route to commercialize your innovation. So, you know, having that keep off the grass sign, um, you know, this is my technology, not really yours, um, but then having the, the rights there in law to, to, to defend yourself uh, or even, um, you know, if, however you want to use it offensively, move forward. But that commercialization um, can help you in product launch, it can help you in li licensing negotiations, but it can also help you from an investment position, um, as I'm sure investors would want to know that, you know, the secret sauce that's within your company uh, can't be taken away from your company and, and sort of stays within. Um, but then there's also more uh, sort of uh, there's tax relief also available. So um, the patent box is one example, um, very much a UK uh, incentive, and it allows anybody that has a UK granted patent um, to reduce their corporation tax on profits related to patented te patented te te uh, technology. Sorry, I can get my words out there uh, from 19 to 10 percent. Um, and that may change in the future, as I'm sure Rishi Sunak is looking to increase the corporation tax bill. So, yeah, um, I mean, that's already locked in. So, you know, a couple of years, corporation tax will go up and, um, you know, the patent box, uh, the way the patent box benefit works, reducing uh, the corporation tax rate down to 10 percent is not planned to change. So the mm -hmm. uh, tax of that benefit will uh will absolutely accelerate. And, and a lot of what we're talking about today, as Ash has just set the scene there, uh, between things like trademark and copyright, uh, which are more artistic in nature, we're really gonna to talk to you more around the patenting side, because that's the piece where uh, you guys will most likely find um, uh, some interesting uh, points to, to work. So what we're gonna do now is show you a, a really short um, animation, just a, a minute long, just to give you a very quick intro to um, uh, really what patent box is and, and the idea around this is just to um, very quickly explain what the scheme is from a, a commercial point of view and, and how people might actually use it. 
Paint a Box is a tax incentive that rewards innovation and reduces your tax bill to 10%. It may be that the painted element is minor, like a single blade of grass. As innovation doesn't have to be rocket science to be paintable, you'll be surprised to know most patented inventions are just small technical improvements on existing products or processes. So where's your blade of grass? So if you want to knock it on Ash, um, so I think the, um, you know, the important thing about patents and pat uh, uh, patent box is that the government recognizes that businesses that are innovative are likely to have something that can be patented. And they've got these incentives in place to help people um, invest in those, really. It makes the UK a better place to be. It uh, helps UK PLC on the international stage. Um, and it also helps with what the government refers to as spillover effects, which is the upskilling of the workforce around, um, you know, interesting technologies and uh, uh, general uh, sort of industrial improvement. So if you're in a business that is patenting, then, you know, being around that as, a, as, as an employee, uh, as an investor, it's a good place to be. Uh, it shows you're in the right, um, uh, the right sort of field. So a couple of headlines or three on, on patent box, what it means. Well, we told you it essentially reduces corporation tax uh, by half. Um, more so when the corporation tax increases in a couple of years time. Um, there's significant benefit already being taken uh, in the UK, but it's across a very, very frighteningly small number of businesses based on what we know and who we speak to about who have patents and who have the ability to get patents, but don't because they don't understand it as a commercial outcome. And it's a very, very murky world um, in terms of how you get a patent. It's uh, attorney led. Uh, which maybe isn't such a commercial uh, lens uh, at all. And it looked at how to protect the world and how to fight off all comers, as opposed to a commercial outcome there might be at the end, uh, whether that's to have something good in the shop window, whether it's to upskill um, or whether it's to take advantage of your patent box. Those lenses are often not used with the patent attorney world. So over a billion of benefit taken uh, in the last published uh, year of stats from HMRC across just a thousand businesses, um, which has grown nearly 20% on the previous year. And we expect it to grow again when the next set of stats come out, but it's still really small. It shouldn't be. Um, the average benefit being taken is, uh, you know, is huge, a huge, huge value there. And yes, there is a disproportionately large amount. I mean, if you look at fintech, you know, over 350 million was taken uh, from just um, uh, 10 companies in, in fintech. So it is disproportionately weighted towards a large, but there is a significant number of smaller businesses now jumping on and uh, taking advantage of the patent box scheme uh, as well. They should because they're highly innovative. And uh, the SME side, the small to medium enterprise side of the uh, patent box claim is the growing part of the market. And it absolutely should be. Um, next, please, Ash. Um, so a bit of uh, info about criteria for a UK patent. And um, I'll let Ash cover off some more detail on the actual patent journey in a sec. But these are the three things that you're looking for if you're going down the, um, uh, the route of trying to patent some software. But in the world of, um, you know, ESG and, uh, you know, clean tech, uh, green tech, it's not likely to always be software. It's likely to be more physical things. So really, you're looking for the first two. Um, you're looking for, for novelty. So the invention must be new, uh, can't really be out there. Um, it can't be, you know, can't be any prior art. That's what we're looking for. That's what we do when we do our research into these. Is there anything that's already been published? Um, and is someone already doing it? Because if they are, then you can't uh, you can't patent it. Um, the other thing you've got to be able to do is show an inventive step. OK, so the inventive step, it must be a non-obvious one. OK, and there's loads of examples that we can give um, industry specific, uh, business specific. We'd be happy to talk about those um, and we'll give you some uh, a bit later. But there must be an inventive step. So it's got to be cool. It's got to be inventive. It's got to be novel. It's got to be new. Um, and if you're in the software world, it has to show what they call a technical effect. OK, so it must have a technical application or function. So most obvious thing there would be uh, use a piece of software to make something run faster, slower, uh, you know, more efficiently. So that's an example of how software. But there are many other examples, too. Um, so that's really it. I mean, it's um, um, Ash, anything to elaborate on that side? Um, yeah, not, not, not too much, to be fair. Yeah, no, all good. And um, so we'll nip on there and show you a bit about the patent uh, timeline, because another thing that's really sort of misunderstood is, is how you get a patent. What do you do? What does it actually take? Um, you know, how much time, effort and cost? Well, the answer on the cost and the time is 
if you're working with someone that charges you time and material, it will take you a lot of money and a lot of time. If you're working with somebody who's very commercially focused on just the right blade of grass or the right gem that you want to take forward, then actually the cost is much, much lower. The uh, focus is narrower and therefore uh, the scope of the project is lower. Um, and your chances of success are, are, are much higher. So this is a typical timeline, which I should just walk us through quick on, on how a patent uh, application process would typically run. Yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, no, uh, from the start, um, a patent application would typically be drafted um, and that's really done by a, a patent attorney, um, uh, which takes only a few weeks, but that's kind of where the journey starts. Um, from there, you will file your, your invention um, at the uh, respective patent office whichever you choose um, and then there will be something called a preliminary examination uh, and search report which gets released around four to six months and that gives you a, a good idea as to uh, what may come up in the further examination stage um, whether you should continue with your application or not whether there is any prior art out there in the, in the field that might have a, a sort of a negative effect on um, either the novelty or the inventive step um, aspect of um, the examination stage um, and it's really just a quick look see just to um, really understand whether you should you know progress with the application or not after that assuming that you want to continue um, 12 months on you would be looking at the deadline for foreign filing um, so that's when you decide which countries you potentially want to file at um, other than the UK let's say um, and that's a, a fairly fixed deadline um, and then once you've picked those countries or decided that you want to continue just in the UK alone, um, the patent application will be published uh, at around 18 months um, after the filing date. Um, and it's kind of essential that uh, the preliminary examination, the search report is done before the publication is then your invention is still secret and wouldn't be part of the prior art or public domain if you wanted to refile your application or if anything sort of came up in that search report that was uh, that was negative. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm sorry, just before we go on, a really important thing to point out about this, guys, I'm conscious of time, is that um, where you start, the starting point about how far the scope of your patent is going to be is really important. A patent attorney, you know, is essential in the process. We're not patent attorneys. Uh, patent attorneys we work with, we keep very, very uh, focused and very, very uh, narrow in terms of what they're looking at. So that this uh, process is kept as slick as possible. It doesn't change the length. It still takes about two years for a patent to, to grant, but it can um, accelerate the process and it can give you some very quick answers um, right the way through to uh, patent granting, which is sort of 24 uh, plus months. So um, I think, Ash, we'll nip onto the next slide. That'd be great. Sure, sure. One more quick animation for you guys. By harvesting your IP, you're tapping into a gold mine that's right underneath your nose. But before you tune out, IP actually does relate to you and isn't as complicated as you think. With a simple patent found in your R&D, you're taxed much less and will save thousands a year, every year, year after year. But businesses won't do that because when people hear IP or patent box, they think this. They think jargon. They think academia. They think Bill the lawyer. And Bill the lawyer spends a lot of your time and your money going through every little detail and doesn't really have an incentive to get results quickly or sometimes at all. That's why with GovGrant's IP Harvest, we flipped the conversation. So when you think IP, you don't have to think this. You can just think this. Let me paint you a picture. No jargon, no academia. No massive bills from Bill, because we don't try to harvest the whole field. That's to say we're not obsessed with creating an expensive, impenetrable shield around you. Just a single blade of grass. The secret ingredient, that small, shiny gem. Because, make no mistake, that single gem helps our clients save thousands every year and could easily help you too. We are success aligned, so we work quickly and cost effectively. That's why we can give you a quick yes no answer that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. So get in touch and we can ask you a simple yes or no question that will let you know exactly what you can harvest from your R&D. Thanks Ash. So I think um, uh, the thing to take away from that, guys, is that we help our clients get to uh, the end of the journey quickly and we start with the R&D. 
uh, and we work out from there. So here's a case study for you, okay, um, around uh, a tomato grower. So not the most obvious uh, uh, sort of clean tech business, but it is one because they reuse uh, a lot of what they do. Um, a lot of the heat um, is, is, is naturally sourced and, uh, you know, the water is reused and um, the whole project here is around um, hydroponics and uh, some clever agri-tech. But um, a family business uh, who commercially grows tomatoes, very large supplier, um, invest in a lot of new sites, um, anaerobic digestion sites and other big uh, greenhouses, obviously, as well. So the challenge for these guys was actually uncovering what their what their IP was. They knew they were doing something different. So they knew their market very well. But they also thought that, um, you know, perhaps there's a way to, to get something from it. And so we we helped them from beginning to end. Uh, firstly, by giving some very, very timely advice because there was going to be some prior art had we not got involved, uh, but also to uh, make sure that they got a very, very um, narrow uh, pattern in the right place based on the technologies they were using uh, and stand alongside them from a, a business that had no interest in patenting at all, no understanding of it, no appetite to get involved with lawyers. We did all of that for them and we helped them all the way down the path to um, uh, to actually get a patent uh, successfully granted. And um you know it's uh it's now in a position where it's patent box ready and so you can't just jump straight into patent box you've got to do it when you're making profit and the right things um and uh you know given that these guys use their technology across everything uh it's uh it's quite a good place for them and uh we certainly help them so the benefit is uh very fast cost effective approximately half the usual time to actually get to the end result uh from the patent side because we kept it narrow and we were very focused on what we did so we knew early on that it was going to be successful uh or had a very good chance of being successful rather because you can't guarantee anything until it's done um and uh you know the cost uh, was kept absolutely uh rock bottom for the guys as well so that's important too uh, cost effective value driven um if you want to nip it on uh, ash another good example um as well is uh, a case study around uh, biofuel so uh you know again it's uh somebody that um uh, that we know well and a you know, huge uh, biofuel refinery, other side of the scale, really, to uh, tomato growing, but everything in the middle can sort of fall into this uh, into this space. So obviously, you're trying to drive the energy transition here. That's what the challenge is, and that's what the opportunity is for the business. Um, but it's constantly innovating, a constantly, uh, you know, really, really strong R and D uh, process in the company, R and D tax claim. Uh, you know, we optimized all of that for them, made sure that was going as well as it should do. Um, and then it's compliant. You know, we're, we're putting our hands in the government's pockets here. We better be doing it properly. And uh, compliance is king in everything we do. Um, but standing alongside optimization, it's now in a position where uh, there's significant uh, patent um, opportunity in this uh, space. And there's loads going on. So you look at the competitive landscape, you look over your shoulder, see what other people are doing. It's interesting to know that regardless. So patent landscaping piece. A uh, great bit of information for these guys, the opportunity to move forward into patenting as well, um, you know, on top of the huge R&D uh, uh, benefits that are available to businesses like this, like yourselves, who are um, or your portfolio companies as well, who are investing in these type of technologies. Um, and Ash, I think on to the uh, uh, last case study you're going to give, uh, which I think talks to somebody we've got in the room, uh, you know, part of the, uh, the, the 26 for COP26, uh, we hope, uh, 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 fraternity. Um, so a bit of info about what you've seen on these guys. Yeah, no problem. Um, main thing I really wanted to highlight here is that um, that Cheesecake Energy, especially, are looking to to sort of invest in um, uh, you know patent rights. And as you can see in the chart for the last few years, uh, from 2019 onwards, there's been a sort of increased investment in patent filings. And I think you know, considering everything that we've been talking about today. Um, you know, this kind of uh, sort of portfolio of, of a company could be, you know, it could really benefit from from patent box. Um, and, and that's probably one of the things that should really be on the forefront of uh, of their minds. But also um, perhaps there might be other companies, um, you know, that are on this call that might be in a similar position that may have filed patents or be looking to or even have patents granted that, you know, there may be, uh, you know, some revenue or some uh some benefit you know pretty much around the corner yeah and this is a really good example here of a, an innovative business that's innovative uh truly innovative in the nature of what it does but also from the outside looking in you can look at a business like uh cheesecake and say that about it because it's got this sort of patent portfolio now this could just be uh, the tip of the iceberg um but i think outside that you've got other opportunities here uh, uh, for everybody to explore, whether it's in one particular technology or whether it's in the process you use to actually drive that uh, 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 solution to your clients. 
there are opportunities to pass it across and being told what's right to look at and what's wrong is probably a good um, a good starting point. So um, that's the last uh, example we wanted to give today. Um, and we're you know conscious that we we had thirty minutes to talk about. I think we're just uh, just nipping over. And so um, you know with that we're quite happy to open up. If anybody's got any questions, I will ask uh, quickly. Again, uh, we'll take those now. Um, and uh, similar similarly, we've got uh, our two colleagues. Um, you know, look any of us up. Um, I'm, certainly available to talk but uh mark and our, our esg on sport, uh, onboarding specialist colin uh bar is also available colin's up in glasgow uh so if uh, uh there's an opportunity to speak and meet in person certainly when it's coming up to uh, cop 26 if people are there physically then uh we'd be more than happy to uh, to meet you um and also to talk on a one-to-one -one level give you your own uh, workshop about what is good in your business potentially what works in your industry um what other people are doing and, you know, really, are there any stones to, to turn over uh, for your company that could perhaps move you towards a uh, patent box um, and uh, 20 years of uh, potential benefit from the patents you've got there? Uh, maybe even looking at optimising your R&D uh, tax, if that's something that the business is doing already. Um, higher capital returns for investors and obviously optimising your uh, position when it comes to government incentives is important for any growing uh, uh, and um, uh, innovative business. Um, so at that, um, I can't see if we've got any questions because I'm on my phone, hence the uh, technological issue I had on the way in. But um, I don't know, Rob, if uh, uh, Robert, if there's any uh, questions to, to ask at all. Uh, yeah, what's coming uh, just on the link right now, uh, and it's actually Paul Codd, uh, who says we're not yet profitable. Uh, can we roll forward the benefits of patent box by patenting now against future years corporation tax? And if so, how many years forward? Sure. So uh, really good question. So patent box is absolutely contingent on a tax bill. Um, so you do have to be profitable to take benefit from it. And actually uh, choosing when to elect in. First of all, having something to uh, patent is the first thing. Uh, choosing when to elect in and then doing that properly. Because there's doing patent box and there's doing it properly. Um, those things that need to be considered. But whatever happens, uh, if the business has a desire to become profitable, then uh, most do. Um, not everyone, but most do, um, then the decision based on the patent timeline we spoke about before, if you don't really have patents in place, you know, it's potentially a year or two away anyway. So you need to be talking today about what you're going to do then. And we're quite happy to play the long game uh, with our clients um, because the long-term relationship is what it's all about. So you can't collect it up and then use it again in the future. But when you are totally profitable, you can then elect, in, elect into the patent box at that time. Once you've elected in, you then uh, claim for patent box benefit every year thereafter. So pressing go is as important as uh, getting the patent. When you press go, is timing is quite important. Thanks, Dominic. I've got another one from uh, Amitava Roy. Uh, is it, they have two granted patents. Uh, how can they demonstrate their revenues are linked to the patents? Uh, and and it, perhaps just a little bit more of an explanation uh, about how to actually you know, file a patent through patent box. Uh, that would be... That would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's a, there's a webinar in itself. Um, huh. However, uh, it genuinely is. And um, it's also quite a ta um, uh, an accounting treatment heavy uh, conversation. But there are some new uh, guidelines in from HMRC around how to do that. Um, what you see is that we, we do see a number of patent box claims. We deliver seven figure patent box claims to, uh, to a few of our clients, actually. Um, and some smaller who get smaller benefit, but still is important to them. Um, what's important to recognize is that uh, there are very, very uh, well used methodologies for uh, streaming down uh, revenue to show it uh, how it attaches to the patent. Um, we're experts at doing that. Um, it's a separate conversation. We're willing to have to uh, tell you about how that works, um, perhaps after this. Fantastic. And, and as a follow on question from uh, Amitava, uh, we're really getting into the detail here. So, you know, apart from selling patented equipment, can the income based on offering services using the know-how associated with the patents be eligible to reduce the corporate tax? Yeah, so quite possibly. Know-how is a bit of a difficult one in itself, yeah. but the exact example about this is, um, uh, you know, an example of a, you know, a, a, a car on a production line. Um, you don't have to have the whole car patented in order to be able to take uh, patent box benefit from it, but you can have a patent on a bolt on the engine that's intrinsic to its operation, or you can have a patent on the actual process on the manufacturing line. So if you've got a patent there, then everything that you do goes through it. 
Okay, so there's a case to talk about that. But again, it's technology specific and it's business specific. So we need to get into the detail, um, a flippant answer, but actually you can uh, get full, full uh, benefit from Patent Box by just uh, patenting a small element. And when it first came out, that was the biggest objection point from some of the other European countries around the UK Patent Box, but it still stands. So um, a very good point there. And um, uh, But yeah, no help, slightly different, but actually touching a little part of the process and everything going through it. Yeah, plenty of examples of where that's worked. Um, if I can just um, read between the lines a little bit, I think uh, also uh, Amitava's question uh, is partly about revenues from royalties on patents that um, royalties that are sold on. Uh, yep. And I'm, I guess the answer to that is yes, you can uh, um, you can get uh, um, those revenues um, ca uh, can be um, the, the patents filed in patent box can be used to to uh, reduce the, the corporation tax on that. That's great. I, I'm conscious that not everybody wants to use the chat function to pose questions. Uh, happy to take any questions from the floor. Uh, if you could turn on your camera, unmute your mic, tell us who you are and the company that you're with, that would be helpful. I'm just conscious that we have uh, so many of you are continuing to to hang on the on the call. Yeah, happy to go along uh, uh, late with this. Um, while you're considering your questions, let me ask you, you want, I mean, we're talking, we spent a lot of time talking about the upside uh, uh, potential around patent box. Is there any downside uh, uh, risk at all uh, uh, about getting into patent box? Any uh, any top tips? Any anything that we one should be aware of when uh, uh, when uh, executing on a on a claim? Yeah, I mean, um, I think the uh, the important thing to uh, uh, to recognise about patent box is that there are different ways of doing it. Um, I think the first thing that you've got to understand is that. Uh, it's an entitlement. So the government wants you to take this. And the reason that it's done uh, through the tax function is that's how businesses interact with the government on a monetary level. Um, but the risk is really not doing it properly uh, in the first place. And then, you know, HMRC can ask questions about that. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's obviously a problem with time consuming one itself. Um, and, you know, optimising it in a compliant way is important as well, you know, um, there are lots of different ways to, to do things, but compliance is king when it comes to HMRC. So getting someone alongside you that knows what they're doing is quite important for that. Um, and I think the risk is also that when you start with patent box, that you know, what you're patenting runs away with itself. You know, it's, uh, if it's too wide. Uh, Cause you don't have a patent already. You're trying to get one. You make the, um, uh, uh, the thing you're going after too big. Uh, it can become very expensive and time consuming. So keeping it narrow, keeping it focused on the right place, uh, making sure that it is something that's going to be part of a profitable uh, product line from the business or part of the main products and service that you offer is quite important. Thank you for that, uh, uh, Dominic. Uh, uh, Yara, you had unmuted. Uh, did you wish to ask a question? It's, uh, hi, everybody. I want to say that uh, I'm a clean tech scout. I, uh, present myself like Silicon Valley community and we're uh, looking for the, um, to build something like an accelerator for clean tech. Uh, so I'm in the role of a scout right now and we have about 12 projects. Um, some of them already considered by Solar Impulse. Um, so some of, some of them get approved. We have funds as well and we are going to COP from one of the organizations um, I'm going to probably, I don't have actually questions to <laughs> GovGrant, but uh, it's generally, like I was already talk to, uh, talking to uh, um, Mark and some of your um, members as well, but uh, it's just uh, uh, good to know. Thank you very much for the information. Yeah, I'll probably meet with you later because I have to really talk to you because I was in all of this process of it's really hard to build it up and, and catch up with everything. So I have to meet with some of you probably with Mark later on. So well, that's, yeah, thank you that's very much. That's great, Yara. Yara. And we're you know, delighted to welcome you in, into, uh, into, the, into the program. Uh, we have a, a, a strong desire to partner up with uh, accelerators, incubators, and, and obviously funders. So uh, lots to talk about. We will be at the COP 
Uh, one thing that I will put in the chat function is for those of you who may wish to at least register interest in attending the COP, whether it's physically uh, or online, depending on how you want to manage your carbon footprint or, or, or even if you want to just come to Glasgow because you've never been, uh, you, can, you can register uh, you very quickly uh, with, a, uh, with a click. Uh, okay. Are there any other questions from, uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the floor? Anybody who wants to ask anything, just unmute. Uh, show us your camera if you can, uh, and, uh, and, and feel free to, uh, to, to ask away. I think there is a... Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, some, of the, uh, some of the projects are actually belong to, uh, um, I would say, Eastern European uh, state institutions that were developing this, for example, like watersheds, uh, cleaning system, uh, and some kind of that. And, and we're facing now the challenge with the uh, legislation, you know what I mean? Especially if it's possibly like Russia, Ukraine, Moldova. Uh, so we need a little bit of uh, lawyer support. Uh, so we don't know how it gets in conflict with this. Uh, they patented on the, that side, uh, but mm, if, if it's possible to organize a consultation, maybe with Brown and Runik, I, I don't know. Uh, because for right now we can't, I mean, guide us, please. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Thank and you. I have to take a conversation offline, no problem at all. Um, but uh, for UK patent box, the patent needs to be granted in either the UK or Europe. Um, there are a couple of exceptions to that, but the reason for it is that to, to patent outside of the UK or Europe, it's actually seen as a bit easier. So especially in America and other parts of the world, it's, it, there aren't as many hoops to jump through for patents. We've, we've lobbied along with um, a report we did in conjunction with the CBI to say, look, this is a bit too complicated. We'd like it to be easier. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we're, we're certainly advocates for that. But UK and European registered patents will get you into patent box. And uh, I think understanding for businesses what they should and could patent in the first place is fine. RIP landscaping does that. Um, so we've got internal and external landscaping. Um, but of course, it all starts with the uh, the R and D um, normally. So with the R and D for R and D tax, if you've got a business register in the UK, uh, you'll be claiming uh, um, R and D tax credits already, probably, possibly not, um, because you've got a registered business here in the UK that's liable to pay corporation tax in the UK, and that shows the type of innovative activity you're doing. So if anybody wants to. Uh, talk about those type of activities, got specific businesses in mind, or just some ideas you want to throw around. We're happy to have individual workshops, no problem at all. Thank you. That's great. Uh, any last questions? We probably should start to, to, to wrap it up, although I don't want to put restrictions on uh, Dominic, on, on you and the team, but uh, uh, well, any, uh, any last questions? I, I think there was one more from Amitava. I was going to suggest to Amitava because it was another quite um, in-depth question. Uh, maybe we could arrange a call um, and get some of our technicians to uh, talk this through with you. I think that's yeah. a great suggestion. And by the Absolutely. way, I, I did notice that one or two people uh, joined the call very late. And just to let you know, there is a recording and uh, I shall get that um, um, over to Robert who will distribute it. Good Thank stuff, you, Mark. I think we're okay, we're okay, Robert. And if uh, people want to follow up individually, we're here. Uh, happy to speak again. Uh, we'll be in around uh, the event uh, as well. So you know, plenty of opportunities to speak. But hopefully, that's given people a bit of a flavour for how uh, patterns can be used commercially. Um, you know, in in the UK. And uh, if anybody's got any real uh, uh, sort of more detailed questions or any ideas to bounce off, theoretical or, or, or real, we're happy to do it um, after the event. No problem. Well, that's that, that's fantastic, and it's it's great to have uh, you know sectors and area specialists such as Gov Grant uh, to uh, to to give us uh, you know some some guidance in in this area. So, uh, really appreciate uh, you know, the contribution. Uh, I, I think we I've seen some thumbs up on the uh, on the chat. Uh, uh, as Mark said, uh, we'll get the uh, recording, the replay uh, of the uh, entire program. Uh, up on the uh, uh, at the on the Greenbacker's website, it'll probably be tomorrow. If we can get it up there sooner, uh, we will. But we'll send you a notification just as soon as we've done that. And uh, uh, once again, I want to thank uh, uh, Dominic, uh, Ash, uh, 
Mark uh, for their, uh, their great contribution today. And thank you all for your attention and uh, onwards and upwards. We'll, uh, we'll see you on something else. Uh, this is going to be a one-off. We will have uh, uh, something from, um, uh, uh, from uh, one of our, our legal sponsors, uh, uh, Brown Rudnick on term sheets and the ins and outs of uh, term sheets uh, uh, in the next uh, several weeks. You'll be hearing from us on that. Uh, so just uh, you know, watch out for the notification and uh, we'll, we'll see you in the market. Thanks very much again, everybody. And thank you for your, uh, again, for, uh, for, for attending this uh, uh, Dominic, uh, uh, Mark and Ash. It's been great. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks. Bye. Bye.